about our technical difficulties uh, for the record no discussion was had or action taken during the uh, during the outage so we are now back to ordinance 1329 amending electrical rates mr styles yes sir so this uh adopts the language that would allow us to pass the kpp surcharge directly through um to our our customers uh, for the 2021 the February winter storm charge, which KPP has uh, voted to do for 24 months or until they have collected the amount of money that has been put out to, to help pay for that. Um, the language you kind of see there, it, it just allows for that additional surcharge to be uh, applied. Um, if you were to, if you were to approve this today, it won't go into effect until uh, what would be the, the, the bill that people receive in June. Um, so that would be the mid-April to mid-May bill. Uh, we don't like to change the rate on people when they don't have any opportunity to make any adjustments to that. So, um, you know, this is, it amounts to basically an 8.4% increase. Um, this the surcharge is on, on kilowatt hour, which is what we get our bill from uh, KPP looks like. We'll get a kilowatt hour uh, re receipt on that. So. Um, what we would plan on doing is to apply this and then just directly pay it to KPP. Um, and then the intention would be to replenish the surcharges that we paid from our reserves for February, March, April, and May by carrying the surcharges on until we had basically collected that amount of money. Um, and that would be based on kind of looking at previous averages, about $70,000 that we would be pulling out of the reserve fund to cover those months while we have it or we're getting charged, but we don't have the surcharge in place. So, um, you know, we would obviously once, once that money was collected and recuperated into the uh, reserve funds, we would end that surcharge. So that was the intention. Uh, you could also, you know, the, the city could also eat that if that was something that you wanted to do, but the intention and how it was designed was to be able to, to collect what we paid out on those months. So just if I'm clear, KPP will probably need it for 24 months, but three months of those will already have occurred. Already been paid. Correct. So then we would still do 24 months to to each of our consumers yep. in the last three months would pay us back. To repay us. Yep. Okay. Correct. That is correct. Any other questions for Mr. Stiles? Hearing none, I'd ask for a no motion to approve ordinance 1329 amending electrical rates and authorize the mayor to sign. I'll make that motion. Councilman McCarty moves. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Drigger seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll pull the council. Councilman Gehring. Councilman McCarty. Yes. Councilman Lowen. Yes. Councilman Driggers. Yes. Motion is approved 4-0. We will now move to item agenda item E4, summer 2020 EBH invoice for $4,510.42. Mr. Stiles. Yeah, thank you, sir. So this is a, a an invoice for the US 50 industrial project that's gonna be started here um, in the next month. Uh, it was build, build and design for the for EBH on this project, it came into the office and it got missed. It went through the cracks a little bit there. So um, we found out about it. They asked us about it. So we need to go back and, and pay this bill. Um, it's the four thousand five hundred ten dollars and forty two cents, and it's it's tied to design and survey work for this project. Okay. Any questions? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve the summer 2020 EBH invoice in the amount of $4,510.42. I'll make that motion. Councilman Gehring moves. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Driggers seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. All right, agenda item. E5 mowing bids, Mr. Stiles. 
so we've received the mowing bids for the six areas that we uh, approved for letting at the council meeting last month. Um, you can kind of see the, the bids that we got back. Uh, total cost would be about $3,000 per month, uh, $18,000 for the six month mowing season. We feel like based on the amount of time and effort we spend in doing this mow mowing these areas, uh, that we'll actually come out a little bit ahead on this. Uh, we'll certainly defer some costs that we know uh, for, for a mower that we would need to be replacing too. So uh, it's a good opportunity to see how this works. Um, we don't feel like we'll be losing anything at this point um, to, to give this a try. One of the big things is with the recreation department with hiring a new golf superintendent. Uh, Gary currently does a lot of mowing in the sports complex. So we shifted some of that stuff around so that they don't have to do that. Um, and then it would be, uh, so we would need somebody to pick that up. And that, that's one of the big areas. Um, in area four, we're, we were asking not to necessarily award that at this time because low, low bidder was little, big little lawn care. Um, we were, we're concerned that they may not consider or may not take that because they only got the one. Uh, but after talking with them, they are in town those days making, uh, they're in town in Hillsborough already. So they were okay with just doing the one. So. Uh, we have the, the funds for this split between the street, rec, and, and museum, which is also receiving some services here. So um, we don't, we won't be able, we won't have to put on any additional help for this either. So that's, that's a, a plus for us. So we're asking to award all the bids at this point. Um, contingent on getting a, an executed contract approved by the city attorney. We need a short agreement for that. Some of them have more formal bids, which you could just sign and do, uh, but some of them didn't, so it was a situation where we feel like we need to have a contract and Kimberlyn will, will draft that and um, would be able to sign that. We would either be, you could either have the mayor or myself sign that, depending on how you uh, wanna look at that. So uh, that's kind of how we came out and you can kind of see the bids on that second page. Uh, we did get uh, Ken Carlson, who used to work for us um, in the trash department. Uh, he was a little bitter on three of the areas and uh, he did, he provided, every one of them provided the insurance and uh, the workman's comp proof or waiver that we required as well. So they're all good to go as far as we're concerned. So are you saying we can accept all, all six. six areas? Yes, sir. Okay. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I would accept a motion to uh, award the bids for areas one, two, three, four, five, and six to the low bidders as recommended by the city administrator. And I would suggest that uh, on this, we allow the city administrator to sign the contracts. Would somebody care to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, it's moved by Councilman McCarty. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Lowen. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 4 0. Bids are approved. And uh, we'll now step off the agenda for just a second. And uh, we have in attendance uh, Dale Dalkey, our street superintendent. And he has a new employee that he would like to introduce to the council. Dale? Yeah. So uh, this is our new hire, Jesse Dirks, um, and uh, he lives in town here. He has a couple kids, and um, they attend uh, public school here in Hillsborough. And just in the little over a month time that he's been here, he's proved to be a valuable asset. He's uh, very willing to learn and uh, catching on quickly and uh, has good work, work ethic. So uh, I'm glad we hired him. Great. Well, Jesse, welcome aboard. We're happy to have you and uh, look forward to many years working together. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to agenda item E6, which is strategic planning discussion, Mr. Stiles. Okay, so following up on the workshop we had on the 23rd, uh, I've updated the, the main focus areas of the plan. So the child care workforce planning, public safety, community development, housing, and financial stability. Uh, one of the things we needed to do was, was come up with some vis a vision statement or maybe a value statement. That's kind of, they kind of can work interchangeably in this sense. So I've taken the opportunity based on our conversation to come up with a few options. 
they are completely wide open and I am not proud of any of them in particular. So if they need to be picked, picked apart, changed, mixed up, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, yeah, so those, those are the, the options we've kind of put out there. I think it kind of captured those things. Um, and if there's anything in the, in the plan, actual goals, we can kind of talk about those two. Um, I think it would be great if we could get the group back together at some point to kind of talk a little bit more, finalize some things, and then uh, get everything kind of buttoned up. So. Okay, so uh, at this point, you're recommending setting another work session. Yeah, I'm setting a, a work, another workstation for either later this month or early in May. Um, may be able to do it in conjunction with our public hearing special meeting. I was going to ask you. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. I, I know uh, Councilman McCarty has Tuesdays are generally open for you, are they not? Yes, they are. All of them. Okay. So if we can't do it uh, on the 20th, we could possibly do it on the following Tuesday, the special meeting. Yep. And do a uh, do a work session following sure yeah okay well let's so, let's look towards that okay do that okay does that take care of that yeah that's pretty much it unless you wanted to talk about more of that stuff in there but we can do it at the, at the work session yeah, I, 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 I like what you've done here. I, you know, we talked about the things that, uh, that, uh, that, we, that we can embrace and, and have in common. And I do like the idea of, of uh, the fact that uh, we're, we're a town on the prairie and, you know, what it takes to, to, to make a living out here on the prairie is different than what it takes in other places in the country. And I think that's something that, that uh, Provide some values that uh, that we all can embrace and get and, and get our arms around and, and and I think it would I think it would resonate with folks, you know. So I like that uh, and uh, you know again we don't want to make it too long winded or anything. You know it's got to be something short and sweet. So anyway, any other comments or questions regarding uh, regarding that? Okay. Well, hearing none, we will uh, we will uh, recess the uh, council meeting, and I will turn the uh, floor over to uh, David Lowen, who's chairman of the Public Building Commission, for our Public Building Commission meeting. Okay, I call the uh, Public Building Commission meeting to order. We have minutes from the past meeting; They're quite short. Have you all received those and read them? Yes. Okay. I would like a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, we have a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any any changes or um, issues with the minutes? Hearing none, I just uh, would take a vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. We'll move on to our only item of business, and that has to do with the request from Salem Home. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Peter and allow him to make his request. Okay. Um, everybody got the letter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one of the things that uh, has been done, and uh, I really want to thank you, uh, the mayor, the city council, councils, and also uh, Matt, who just uh, joined us recently. Uh, it was very nice that now we have uh, the building back to us, the Salem home, the portion that we occupy. And I also want to appreciate too that uh, most of the things, especially utilities, have been uh, able to be uh, you know, connected, uh, separated. So that part is uh, is done and which is very important. So I want to thank you guys for doing that. Um, the portion that uh, really has been like the main thing that has not been done is the heating and cooling because the system is still joined together. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's a two pipe system. It's a, it's, a, it's an old system, 
Uh, if you start counting from uh, 1968, uh, we are talking about the cross of 63 years. Then if you start counting from 1974, that's about uh, 40, 45 years. Um, how it's joined, you know, the two pipes that runs from the kitchen, from the mechanical room all the way through the kitchen, goes through the hospital, and then go at the feed the 1968. So that is that part is connected with the hospital. And uh, you can't just go to the kitchen at the cart that cut that part. That would be the easiest thing to do. But then then if you did that, then we won't have heating and cooling on the 1968 portion. And I don't know if you can see from the map there, uh, the portion I'm talking about. It's uh, there are about 10 rooms it's on the southeast side there. You know, you can count there, I think, from room two, 13, all the way going to the southeast. And then the, 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 there are some other rooms around there. So the easiest way to do it would be to have a heating and cooling for that portion. And then you just go near the kitchen, fire door there, and then cut the carpet from there. Uh, I have had so many people come there, engineers look at it, and uh, uh, they think that's probably the best way. P1 also gave us two options. Their first option was to do um, what they call VRIF, like what the hospital has. And uh, the, the bed was kind of expensive, but they also gave us another option, which they also told me they don't want to do it, but if that is the only way we can do it, they can still do it. The other way would be to run two pipes from the mechanical room, go through the apartment, and then go up and get it to the 1968. It's no one way, but he said, if that's the only way we can do it, that was 100, about 110. Then if you had taxes, that's about 120. Um, so fire construction came at 100, and uh, with everything, 156, which he would put a new system there. And the good thing with this system, you don't have to use the pipes anymore. You know, the residents will have their own thermostat. They can switch back and forth, cold, cool, in the time they want. Because eventually, that's exactly what would happen to the entire building. I, I'm hoping but that by the time I retire, that will be done. Um, because I know our system is old, 45 years old. I know it cannot go another 45 years from now. So that's why we are really requesting. And the other thing is, if something happens on the hospital, the pipes, we shut the whole system. Same thing, if something happens at the uh, Serum home site, we shut the whole system, drain the pipe, and do the repair. So it's, always very tough. And uh, we are, again, it, it's still, we are still, when the hospital was there, we were doing 45, 55, we would pay 55% of all the utilities and they would pay 45. So when they left, uh, uh, you know, and I had a meeting with Rari, Rari decided, that, okay, we will only pay electricity, we won't pay the gas. But guess what? During winter cold, the gas uh, bill is very high. So it was kind of left, you know, it's not fair for both the, the city and Serum Home. So right now the hospital is paying, the, uh, the city is paying about 45% of electricity bill only. Uh, even like for us, we still pay the gas that is in the gas, one of the gas meter inside the hospital and we don't even use that water heater. That's just to hit the water at the hospital. So the previous administrator did not want to pay. So we have continued to pay because we keep on hearing the uh, quality my community at one time. So I think it's something, yes, I know it is expensive, but I think at some point we need to really 
separated completely. Because either ways we are paying, think about it, that the 2,000 a year, that the 3,000, in five years, that is more than 150,000. 50, so somehow we needed to have the early point for this uh, arrangement because uh, we, even on our side, we have done a lot. We lot the building, we just put a new, uh, a new boiler because the other one just went out and it was in the middle of the winter. Thanks God, we had two of them. So the other one was a backup. So we don't have to move anybody, but it was extremely cold. And uh, we spent 120,000. And then uh, we have been always wanting to do a backup generator because that's where the regulations are going in the next few years, every nursing home will have to have their own generator that can not just power a few lights that can power the whole building. And that's what uh, uh, Jonah is doing for us and he will be done in the next few weeks. So we are grateful that we were able to do that uh, because we were able to do a little bit of saving through payroll protection. So that's the only way we were able to do that. So right now, you know, we can't afford a very big major, major project. So that's why we come to you uh, requesting that you help us with this so that we can, I, I think if everything is separate and it will be good, and we hope that whoever comes on the other side, they will see, they will come and uh, find the, Already everything is done. We don't have to go back and forth because for me, I look forward to whoever is coming on the other side. Maybe we can do some services, you know? Maybe, you know, we can do their order. Maybe we can do meals or possibly if they, I know the generator that's gonna be left there is probably not gonna be enough to back up the whole facility. Maybe we can work a plan because I will have a bigger generator. Maybe we can share some of that uh, uh, generator if they wanted to, you know, because they would just have to do some few work there and then uh, and we can work it together. So unless you have any questions, uh, mine was, uh, was very short. <laughs> So let's be clear about this. What exactly are you requesting from the city? I'm requesting 156,000. Okay. To be exact, it's, uh, and what is and that is to for what now exactly? That 155,748. That will put new heating and cooling on the southeastern part. And that part was actually added after 1953. So it was put in 1968. And that's why it's completely, it's kind of separate from the other part of the building, but it's connected. But it's heating and cooling system is different. Even though it's still a two pipe system. And that would completely separate everything. It's the last one thing that has not been done. So it would completely separate the heating and the cooling from the part which you own and the part which the city owns. Yes. That's what you're saying. And, uh, and then the other part would just be to cut those pipes that can be done easily, to cut those pipes and cut it. That way those pipes don't have to take uh, to cool or heat the hospital attic because that's how it the heat or uh, it the heat that cool the 1968 that same pipe that goes to the hospital heat or cool the hospital attic and then goes all the way to the 1968. So the old system is on the hospital side. No that the system is still on our side. They just ran the pipes through from us to the hospital. And that was done in 1999 when they replaced those two boilers. And instead of putting them at the hospital side, they put them at Serum side. Uh -huh. So what they did, they ran two pipes because it's a two pipe system. And those two pipes go to the hospital 
originally before everything was kind of disconnected, they were heating and cooling the, the patients' rooms at the hospital and the attic. But because of the major pipe breaks that happened two, three years ago, that was rerouted. So we don't get heating and cooling in, in the patient's room. So it only does the attic of the hospital because the pipes of the hospital were too old and there was no way they could be repaired. Framing came, they did it within one hour, it passed again, it was like a lake uh -huh. out of the hospital basement. And the way I understand it, you are in the process of replacing the heating and cooling right now. Is that, is that what the construction is that's going on on the, on the, on the north side of the building there? So no, that's, we are, that's the, the backup generator. That's where you're putting the backup generator? Yes. Okay. It's a 350 kW, okay. and that will be able to power the whole uh, serum home. And, uh, in the case we ever decide to expand, although I don't know that where the space would come from, or if whoever buys or rent on the other side, if we would work on a plan, because you only need it during if something major happens, or maybe you lose power for four or three hours. It wouldn't be a big deal. We would be willing to work with whoever gets there. I believe you've connected with, with um, Matt concerning this issue already. Mm -hmm. Matt, did you have anything that you wanted to clarify from the well, city's perspective? Yeah, I mean, we just to kind of give some, some context to it. Um, I sent this out a little bit earlier today, but the separation costs, we've already spent about $101,132.52 since 2018 to separate the buildings. Um, and so there's, there was a question about, you know, how much, how much have we spent to do this already? Um, the electrical costs that we kind of, that Peter kind of mentioned, so the way that's worked, they split the electrical as much as they could, um, but the generator that we have is also the backup generator that they were using. But according to Elcon, once their project is finished, they can be completely split off and we won't have this uh, so electrical, electrical separation. Yeah. They'll be completely split electrically. No, that does not. Uh, I think there is a confusion there. The, that may not be, may not separate, may not stop us from heating and cooling the hospital. Well, that, that'll the separate the electrical. Yeah, it would completely because they would have to disconnect it right. because we can't have to back up the Correct. On our side. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so, so that electrical portion of the bill, uh, Peter's right, that is the amount that we have spent um, for, for electrical, uh, but it's estimated. So, uh -huh. You know, once that 45, it's 45.55. So just a point of clarification that that's kind of how it's it's been done now. But once once Elcon finishes with their generator, they will be split, um, and so that'll be that'll be in the, their entire cost, and we'll have our entire cost with the hospital side. So that will okay. be finished. Um, what we get now with the piping, um, with the heating, is that. With, with the proposal that they're talking about, would this connect our heating and cooling in the attic, which is, it's pretty minimal, to be honest. Um, we actually talked about and had Flemings come out and give us quotes to put space heaters up in that attic so that we can prevent the fire lines from freezing, which is one of the issues that we had back in February where we couldn't occupy the building. We dumped the fire lines and drained them out uh -huh. um, because that heat wasn't sufficient to, to, to keep that going. So. Um, in fact, what this proposal would do is, you know, not only would be paying for the heating and cooling to be upgraded in, in the 68 wing, but it would also completely disconnect the city, the, the hospital's attic heat, which is fine because we kind of anticipated that. Um, you know, we had anticipated that and we were, were working on, on making that move. You know, we hadn't anticipated doing anything on the Salem side or paying for anything to disconnect those, which would in fact, you know, and that's essentially what they're doing and are asking for is for uh, us to help with the HVAC costs on the on the south wing. Um, you know, our, our anticipation on that was that they would be cut and they would figure out whatever kind of system that they wanted to do to heat and cool 
their facility, and then we would worry about what we would need to do in our ours to make sure that it worked appropriately. So um, that was kind of the anticipation. That's what we told Peter, and you know, I, I felt like 150,000 was a, a pretty big ask for the city, considering how much we've already spent um, doing that. Um, and then there was a question about the rent and, you know, there, there's some dispute about what the rent is from, from what I can tell, uh, based on the minutes and what's been forgiven and all those other things, there's a pretty substantial amount out there for that, that, you know, the city hadn't collected. Um, so that it's kind of just a sidebar to that conversation. Now I can tell you right now is that the PBC account has $195,000 in it. So if you made $156,000, uh, investment in the new HVAC for the 1968 wing, you're pretty much draining that account completely and won't be able to meet our obligations uh, for paying the bond payments that come right. out of there. So yeah, those bond payments are pretty hefty. They're pretty hefty. I and mean, the hospital still pays us a, a fair chunk of money, but it's, you know, it, we had this conversation earlier in the year about the burn rate with that uh, when we talked about the $30,000 uh, for the fire suppression system. So, you know, I, while I appreciate their perspective on it, I don't, I couldn't recommend you doing this project just for the, the financial impact that it would have on the PBC and the rents. And also, I don't think that it's, you know, necessarily our, our responsibility to provide HVAC for the 68 wing. Um, you know, it's, it's really something that's, that's on there, you know, something that they need to do. And now that the buildings are split, you know, they're legally divided, but this is one thing I agree that it probably should be, uh, should be gone. Divided, yeah. um, but, but we're going to you know, have costs on our side anyway, yeah. on the hospital it's side not, that the city owns be, to right. just heat the attic. You're just to heat the attic. Yeah, it, it's not, you know, it's not 150,000, right. it's, it's closer to 15. Um, and then, of course, you'll have natural gas costs there too. But um, that would take care of the heating issue that we have in there, but that wouldn't, you know, provide, depending on how this is used in the future, that wouldn't provide any heat uh, to any of the rooms, um, but the, the current system doesn't do that either. So um, it would be something that we would have to look at as we look to develop that. So, um, yeah, that that's kind of the perspective. And then that's, you know, essentially what Peter and I have talked about. I know Peter's also talked to, to Mayor Thurston about it as well. So, um, you know, it, it's, it is a decision that is beyond our ability to approve. It has to come from the PBC, but, uh, from my perspective, I wouldn't recommend that you, that you do this. So even not recommending it, you'd also have to find a money source to do it. Correct. We would have, so you're, you're saying you wouldn't recommend spending this money, but as far as separating these systems you would i think that's the thing to do mm -hmm. um you know but from our perspective it was you know cut the pipes and let cut them and loop it the up pipes. and yeah and let it you know and then when we would move on to what we were going to do in there uh mm -hmm. with the space heaters so um and they're going to replace their pipes anyway they, they would have to do whatever they would need to do to do that it sounds like you know based on the the things that the boiler system really isn't the best choice ultimately anyway probably but and that didn't sound like the contractor really wanted to do it but uh, that would be the most cost effective option so yeah, for yeah for that already we have the boiler so you would not need a boiler what he was suggesting is run two pipes from the mechanical room all the way through the apartments settings and then angle to the 1968 without, and that he would connect that to our current system current. we have that we are using, and then still go ahead and cut those pipes at the near the kitchen, right. kitchen fire tower. So that was a little bit uh, cheaper, 110 than you under sales taxes, that's about 120. But he said if that's the only option that's available, he would still do it. But it will, and that way it will separate everything. Uh, you know. Yeah, it would be. But for me, really, to tell you the truth, I don't like this arrangement of paying 45, 55 because I don't know whether those even numbers are right because right. it's only on electricity, not on gas. Right. You know, and. Uh, 
we don't know. We, we don't know. Me and you don't know how much energy do we use to heat that attic. We don't well, know but, how but much. What I understand is that we're not going to be there for very long. Right. Once that electrical, once their generator is in there, that electrical cost will be completely split. And once we did, and once you did, like Fleming giving you a quote for heating the, the attic, that would be completely separate also. Well, yeah, that would be separate and that would eliminate the need to have the heat. Right. So there wouldn't be a gas. We wouldn't, none of their, none, none of, of their gas, gas would be being paid for anything. And would be needed to. It would still, if it continued to run there, there's no way it could be eliminated unless it was cut. Unless it yeah, cut, right. what he was talking about. Yeah. Exactly. But what I'm saying, that does not eliminate the 45-55. You are still running those pipes. Oh, I, I guess I'm confused then, because it, that's what very, I think. I, I don't think that's a, an accurate statement, because just because you're still running the, the water, the hot water or cool water through those pipes, you're still heating or cooling the attic, regardless of how we do this. We, this has got nothing to do with the generator. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah. has got nothing to do with the generator because the generator, what we have with the generator is just the, the wire that runs to feed. We use our electricity and in case we lose power, we get electrical, we get that power from the backup generator that we have. Uh -huh. And we only get some few lights, few lights only, because that's mm -hmm. all you can do. So I don't understand what you mean that uh, that will eliminate completely. It is it. Yeah. Until we do the right thing, completely yeah. separate, I don't see, because mm -hmm. You may want to cut those pipes, and I may not. I don't have the money to do what I need to do. So for you, you can say it's so easy to just go and cut those pipes, but you have to think about what happens to the other side. Sure. Yeah, we. You can't you know, cut I, until I we have the money. You can't cut unless we are ready. Right, and so we're not. We're not intending to cut. Yeah, it. I mean, so. But the, the 45 55 split does go away because the only reason it's not the way it is now is because they couldn't completely separate the electrical because of how it was wired with the backup generator. So once they rewire your generator, your electrical meter will give you 100% just what you get. And that will be the meeting and reader would, would be the exact amount that you're using. So that electrical piece goes away. The gas piece doesn't. You're right. That continues. Um, and whatever kind of electrical that you have in order to start the pumps and get the generator or the, get the boiler system, whatever electrical is tied to that, yes, that would still be in there. But at the same time, you know, they, that, that, that falls off. Um, so you'll be paying your full whatever your actual electrical bill is. The only thing that is still connected is that those pipes up there. Uh, in, the, in the boiler room or in the attic. So, you know, while, while I understand, I understand the predicament, I understand what you're, what you're saying. You know, I don't feel like it's our responsibility as the public building commission to provide heat to the, you know, 1968 wing of your facility. Um, and if, if we were to do this, in fact, it would, it would cut the heat in the attic that we already have. So, you know, what little benefit we were getting goes away too. So, you know, we're planning for that. We understand that, but you know, at the same time, I don't think it's our obligation to, to provide the heat for the 1968 building wing. It's hard to know how much heat we 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 use there in the attic. That's the that's sure. the part no, it's yeah. hard to say. Yeah. That's hard to say. I, I really don't even agree with this 55, 45. It's probably different. It, it's probably different because who did the math? You know, it's just a, a number that was that's, thrown there. Yeah. And that's just for the it's electrical. It's probably not fair on your side. It's fine. I'm, pro I'm yes. probably could be paying more. You probably could be paying less. But sure. uh, I, I think there has to be an end to this at some point. You know, you're spending money. Are there further questions for these men?
Well, where do we go from here? That's the question. <laughs> Indeed it is. Yeah, I. That's the question. Where do we oh, go yeah. from here? That's the thing for me. I don't think uh, if we don't do anything, I, I think we, 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 we don't solve anything. It's, the problem will still be there. It's just that uh, it, it can just go away like that. Whatever the decision mm -hmm. we make, there has to be a way to resolve it. I yeah. mean, it's just going to go away easily. No, the hard fact is we just don't have the money. The money's not there. The money's not there. Okay. I mean, you know, we have obligations to those bonds mm -hmm. for the hospital. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not interested in, in getting into an argument with anybody, but uh, the city did forego 55 months worth of rent, which, uh, you know, totals up to $358,000. And it was critical at that time that, that we did that. Yeah, right because it was important to keep Salem Hospital going. And, you know, so we have, and, and it was critical to get these buildings split and get this property in Salem's hands so that they can be in control of their own destiny. That was critical and that took way too long, you know, and that was extremely frustrating to me that it took as long as it, as mm -hmm. it has to get that done. But thank goodness it's, it's now done. That all said, you know, we just, I don't, I don't know where the money's going to come from. I mean, you know, if we, if we gave, if we gave Salem the last of the money in the public building commission, we're going to be up against it and trying can, to figure out where to go yeah, to the taxpayers to get the money to pay those bonds for the hospital. Right. We are, we are, you know, like I said, we are waiting to, to even, you know, even if it's not the whole amount, you know, maybe if we got even half, maybe we can try to, see if we can borrow the rest. We are really willing to work with you guys because I think this really need to be done and just, okay. just get it separated because I think it's the right thing for everybody because I don't, don't think it's fair for you guys to continue paying this 32,000 a year. Well, and we're not going to. We're not going to be paying that 32,000 a year anymore once we get the, uh, once you get your generator wired up. That's that just is that's a fact, you know. So, and you know, I guess I guess I want to say something too to you, Peter. Uh -huh. I I have been nothing but impressed and amazed with the job that you have done for Salem Homes since you have started there. You took an operation that was teetering on the edge, and you have kept that going, and you have made it a lot better. And so. I understand the passion that you have for Salem Home and the passion you have for your job. And, you know, I couldn't be more appreciative. And, and you know, while I may not 100% agree with everything you've asked for, I will tell you that uh, I 100% support, you know, the, the job that you've done and uh, what, what Salem Home means to this community. And I don't feel like the city has has, you know, taken a back seat. I mean, if you look at the value and the actual dollars that, uh, that, that we've contributed up to this point since, uh, since September of 2016, you know, we're getting close to half a million dollars worth of, uh, worth of money that's been, you know, put in that pot to keep Salem going. So, you know, I get it. I mean, it's tough. There's no easy answers here, but I just don't know that that we can continue to drain the public building commission. I mean, we're already we already know that we're going to have to find some other source of revenue to keep this going until the back end of that hospital bond until their agreement pays off because they will pay us back 100%, but that's a few years down the road. So, close to 20, I mean, it's probably yeah. 8 7 or uh, 19 years by at this point. So, before we're going to start seeing that. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just, uh, it's just a rock and a hard place for everybody. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to, this is the group, you know, so Peter has to answer to his constituency and we have to answer to ours. I mean, okay. you know, and, and, uh, so I think, uh, I think that's where we're at. And I, I thank you that, uh, you, you appreciate what we have done and, uh, um, when we start, when I started, it was a matter of 
um, if we continue to pay rent, then we will just have to close at that point because at one time I was sitting around and I just looked at the account and we had like 7,000 in the account and the payroll was coming. So um, there wasn't any way to continue paying that and still, and still stay in business. You know, and, and Peter, I, I get it. And, and, I, and I don't regret for a minute that, that, we, that we stopped making those, you know, asking you to make those payments. But, you know, let's recognize if you had continued to make those payments, you know, that would have contributed $358,000 into that public building commission fund that, uh, that would have made this conversation, you know, today maybe a little different, but that's hindsight. You know, you got to do what you got to do to keep the thing going. I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. So I, I just don't know where we're going to find the money unless somebody can come up with a, with an answer that I'm not aware of. I was thinking maybe you go us in the board amount. Maybe you have. Well, well, even half, I don't know that we'd have, Peter. That's, I think, what. Yeah. Matt, what again was the amount that's left in the PBC? Uh, $195,597.98. And we're making what kind of payments every month on that? Oh, yeah, I don't have that for me. I'm sorry. I know I wrote a pretty hefty check last time. It's it's pretty, about, it's, we're it's about thirty thousand yeah, dollars. They, they they're pretty significant. Yeah. We have to do that every. I haven't said much today. I'm uh -huh. But I'd be remiss if I didn't give you my thoughts on that rent. I don't see how in the world you can justify charging us sixty five hundred dollars a month rent or a building that you have absolutely zero investment in. What is the justification for the rent? Well, the you know, Wendell, we've had this conversation more than one, more than one time. Okay, and the justification for it I'm is not. the fact that the city bailed out the operation so that it could continue to function and operate. The Do city you know used city money and city financing to get to keep the hospital in Salem home going, and I mean, if I had JT on the on the uh, on the call with us, we could go back through that again. And I know that you and I we we've gone through that what more than you, once. What you bailed out Salem home? Yeah. In what res in what respect? Wendell, I don't I yeah I, I don't find it a value to keep having this conversation okay. over and over and over again. Well, thank you very much. But I certainly don't understand it. Well, your your opinion is is noted. Uh, yeah, the question is, how do we move from here? And uh, I don't see this as something we were going to resolve today. Um, unless someone has a motion, if someone has an idea that we can throw out on the table that we haven't seen yet. And so um, the only ideas are, are what we have in front of us. I, I guess I would say that I thought when we did the break, we were done. So that's, I'm a little, I guess, when we actually did it, I thought that was kind of the done point. It looks like we're not quite done because we're still sharing. There's a little bit, a little bit with that costs. line. Right. Well, the, the, yeah, the costs were estimated. Um, the reason why they, their electrical costs are estimated is because they couldn't split them out without taking them completely off the backup generator right. that we had. So. But just, that was the solution. But what I hear Peter saying is there's no way to just loop this line. It has to go through this because it's a well, full it, loop. Yeah, correct? it would have to. It has to be a full loop. Yeah, it has to be a loop somehow. Um, you know, and, and the, in the age of it is probably an issue as well. I mean, otherwise you could probably just cut it and loop it. But you know, that was what we anticipated when we started having that conversation that we would have to find something to heat the attic. Yeah. But that's it. That was that was kind of how we approached it. Yeah. 
So the only way for them to loop it is to loop it back around the same way it came with another right. set of lines. Yeah, it becomes basically a C instead of a uh -huh. an owl. Uh, or they can move to something else, uh, which was one of the other options that Peter had there, which was the 450. 425, yeah. not to us too. If you want to use a very expensive because that's why I got bits from Pile and that PMC came, they do not even want to touch it. But mm -hmm. Pile is normally, you know, you can get a good price with the Pile because, you know, it's not a union company. You know, P1 is a union company. Um, for him, he came with just doing the pipes, putting the pipes again but going through a different direction. And instead of going through the hospital, he was gonna go through the apartments and still come to the same spot. Yeah, so you go upstairs, you come downstairs, and you come back up. Yep. Yeah. Which was less than. Mm -hmm. And that's how you create your loop. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Which, which I would still take that one, but not that. Unless we can figure out some alternate alternative method of funding, some kind of grant or or something, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that could help support this, we just honestly, I we just don't have the money to do it. We have the money, and it, it didn't have anything to do with whether we want to do it or not want to do it. Uh -huh. You know, the, the fact is, we just don't have the money, and even in 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 to Brent's point. Yeah. Even if we, uh, even if we considered half, you know, we're not, yeah. we're not in a point, you know, we've still got this can on the, on the hospital bond, you know, that's been kicked down the road a little bit that we still have to figure out and our time, you know, remaining to get it figured out is coming soon, sooner rather than later, you know, and again, you yeah. know, I, I, uh, I didn't mean to be disrespectful to, uh, to, to Mr. Dirks, but the fact is, is that people with the city and people with Salem negotiated this rent of rental agreement. It was a legal agreement that Peter's predecessor signed, my predecessor signed. And so, you know, it was, it was something in place, you know, and it, was, it existed and we were getting that money. I remember, yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, but, but again, like I said before, I'm not, I, I don't regret that you know that the city made that decision because Salem is an important piece of, of you know the uh, the uh, city of Hillsboro. It's an important you know, service industry in conjunction can... with with the uh, with their with their their competitor that you know that's yeah. next door. I mean, both of those businesses serve a vital function for Hillsboro. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, you know, so I just don't have an answer. I wished I did. Uh -huh. I felt like we, you know, when we did this last uh, Johnson control separating alarms, the fire or the fire suppression system, the 34,000, I mean, that was a pretty deep gulp when we, yeah, when we yeah, approved yeah. that. But, you know, I felt like we needed to do that. And, uh, and I feel like we stepped up to the plate. So I don't feel like you know, the city has, uh, has uh, not tried, you know, uh -huh. to, uh, to be supportive of, of Salem home. I feel like we have been. And uh, so, you know, I'm sorry, we're in this, we're in this spot, but I don't have, a, I don't have an, another answer right now, unless some alternate funding mechanism can be. Unless I hear some kind of motion, we will just end up having to forget it for now and and move on because uh, I can't go anywhere without a decision to do something one way or another. And if we don't have a motion one way or the other, then we're going to have to just table, just let it go. And uh, that's where we are. That's where we are. I can't make that decision for this group and I can't, and, I'm, and I don't have a motion. So, I don't hear anything within a few seconds here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, adjourn the meeting. We're we're done. I think we've heard what's what the issue is, and and uh, of course, if someone comes up with a grand 
great, great idea that we haven't thought of yet. Maybe we can work with something. Hey, I came with the lamp. Thank you very much, Peter. We appreciate you coming. Yep, yep. And keep up the good work over there. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, like I said before, no one is disputing that you guys have not helped or supported. So uh, that was not uh, on my, actually, I did not even, I was not even gonna talk about the, the land. <laughs> Until it came up. I was, I, after I got the title, I wasn't, I promised myself, I will never talk about that thing again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Peter. All right. Thanks. All right. I now call the meeting adjourned. Okay. We're now back in uh, in uh, session with the city council meeting, and uh, we're at agenda item E F or F, excuse me, board appointments. There are none today, and uh, we will move on to item G, city administrators report. Mr. Styles. Yeah. Uh, well, the first thing I want to do is make a big announcement on uh, donations to the museum. So Steve, our Steve Fast, our museum director, has been working pretty hard on getting a couple donations for the Bartle House, uh, which is a project that we've had some money in the in the Community Foundation for, for a little bit of while now. Uh, but Steve just finished receiving $99,880 for the Bartle House, pretty significant donation. Yeah, yeah uh, 25,000 of that, a little over 25,000 came from Bob and Esther Rupp, and then uh, just short of 75,000 of that came from an anonymous donor, so. Uh, we we're able to get those transactions completed and uh, we're Steve's going to get to work on trying to raise some more money for that and hopefully have a really nice project there at the Bartle House. So it's a pretty significant, pretty significant amount of money. And I want to give Steve a, a shout out and kudos for all the hard work on that. It's excellent job. So hey Steve. Yes. Go Steve. Um, other things going on, COVID vaccines. So we've been hosting uh, Marion County pods, our point of delivery for the vaccine. And also the hospitals had several vaccine clinics here. Uh, continue to get more and more out into the county and we just continue to work with them as best we can. And they can use our facility, they seem to like it. So um, we'll just kind of keep on moving with that. Uh, I think we've completed hiring for all, well, we have uh, completed for all of our open positions. Uh, very excited to announce we've got uh, for the golf course superintendent, we hired Avery Unruh. Avery's a, a local guy, uh, scheduled to start next week. He's going to work with Gary throughout the rest of the year. Uh, very excited to have Avery on board there. I think he'll do a great job and um, groundskeeping is kind of in his blood. And so I think he's really excited and we're happy to have him too. Uh, water and sewer department hired Shane Ringel, uh, who's, who's from out west. Uh, he starts either tomorrow or Thursday, um, moving into town. So happy to have Shane in that, in that position there. Uh, we've hired Danielle Bartle to fill the city clerk's position. Danielle comes from, uh, she's got a, a great background in accounting and uh, was previously working at the MB Foundation. Um, happy to have Danielle coming on board. She'll start at the end of April. Uh, work with Jan a little bit there. I have a little bit of overlap so that uh, when Jan uh, retires in, in June, mid-June, we'll have some uh, have somebody there. And then we also filled our front desk position uh, Monday morning. Uh, so Rachel Rachel Plannert is going to be joining us with the front desk clerk. Uh, Rachel's coming to us. She's Got a lot of experience. I think she'd be a great, uh, great fit on the team. Right attitude, uh, hard worker. So I think we'll we'll have uh, some. I think we've got some pretty good hires here. We've got a pretty good slate. So really excited. Happy to be done with hiring. We've done a ton of interviews. So uh, it's uh, so much cross training. Do you do in the office? Uh, we are going to be doing a lot more cross training in the office. Right now, Karen has been cross training with Mana, so she's pretty well spoken on the utility. Um, and then Rachel's going to take over and do some court stuff. And then uh, we have to have some rec things going on. Uh, Steve has helped us out kind of to get through some of that and learn some of those things. And then he's going to pass on what he's learned. So, um, and we're also going to find somebody to do payroll. I've learned payroll and I've been doing payroll. Um, and so we're going to kind of rearrange the duties there. So it's, Sounds good. we're looking forward to it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, fiber project, we got a big light up event here on Thursday at 2 p.m. in City Hall here. Uh, they were working right up until 
we started this meeting. Uh, they've got fiber dropped in here and it's smoking fast according to the technician. So uh, that's probably one of the reasons why we lost, <laughs> lost our feed there for a second. They've been kind of doing some cutting over. So really excited to have it here uh, in, in City Hall and that event will be showcasing kind of the speed difference of what's currently out there versus this new stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a really good event. Um, Mayor Thurston's gonna be speaking at it and Dale Jones also. He's the CEO of TCW. Uh, he'll be making some comments and uh, they'll be signing up people in phase one. They're they're ready to fire it up and turn it on. So uh, anyone who, you know, I'd invite anybody here on the council to come and take a look at it. Um, and then, you know, if anyone's in phase one, to come on down and, and get signed up and take a look at it. It's really good. Moving, moving forward with that project. Uh, Baumgars came in. Uh, we had a conversation with them. They're having a hiring fair. It's actually going to be in our West uh, room over here on April 21st and 22nd, looking at about uh, 2,000 people, give or take. Uh, they've hired a store manager, um, and that person, I think, is in McPherson or somewhere around there to be coming in, but uh, they'll have a lot of positions open. And so from, uh, I don't have the times on here, but um, you can go out to their website. There's a link. Uh, bombguards.com and they'll have a, a link in one of their event boxes so if someone's interested in finding out more information about that they're they're welcome to it so that, that's another another exciting development in the community got a lot of good projects going on and that bomb guards one's going to be great too so we're looking forward to that um, engineering presentations we've got four engineering companies we're going to do in-person presentations that's going to be on next tuesday the 13th uh, from about 1.45 to 4.45. So we've we've learned our lesson in the past. You always limit engineering presentations. Uh, no offense to engineers, but they tend to be a little bit, they tend to go on a little long. So uh, we've, we've limited those out. And so uh, they'll have 45 minutes a piece to do a presentation and then question and answer. Uh, we have Swab Eaton, MKEC, and PEC all coming in. Uh, they're all from Wichita and then EBH will also be um, doing a presentation as well. So anybody wants to attend, uh, we would encourage that. We'll have uh, the city city folks there uh, who reviewed the applications. Um, you know, I think it'll be a good opportunity if you wanna have that, but if, if we have more people there, then we, we can fit into an open meeting kind of situation. We'll have to call a special meeting, but um, you're more than happy to come, be more than happy to, to figure out how to accommodate everybody on that. Um, retirement parties, we've got all the hirings, we've got some retirements too. Uh, Samana Hines party is set for Friday, April 30th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. here in City Hall. That's Mana's last day. Um, June, uh, Jan's, I don't think we've set officially yet. I don't know if we've officially announced that, but it's in the middle half of June. So that's going to be coming too. Uh, sales tax, we got the receipts for the first quarter for 21 and things continue to look pretty good. Um, 2020 and 2019 were, well, 2020 was a good year, um, but 2021 is proven to be a little bit better. So we're actually right now, currently after the first three months, 22,549.88 ahead of where we were last year. So last year was a good year. This year's fixing to be a little bit better. So um, and the, a home of champions sign. One of the things that we have when we're coming into town on Ash, uh, South Ash there is a, a home of champions sign. I, I put a picture of it in there so you can kind of know what I'm talking about. At least I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Um, so it, it, it's a kind of a, well, it's, it's road signs that we've got on utility poles and it's got every time they win a championship, the Trojan championship, we add a little sign to it. Um, so we need to figure out what we're going to do for the boys basketball championship, but I thought, you know, it's a good time to relook at that sign because it's a little bit worn out right now. So um, contacted the chamber and they, they were one of the first people who, or it says it's sponsored by them. So uh, they're, they're interested in helping out. The CDB is interested. I've talked with Baker Brothers about getting something put together. So uh, find some partners and, and do a new sign. I think appropriate sign for the home of champions. So uh, very excited. Always great to add another one to the list, and hopefully we add another one this year for track. So um, that is all I had, sir. Okay. Any, any questions for Mr. Stiles? A lot going on. There is a lot going on. How many did you say Bumgars was hiring? About two dozen. Two dozen? Two dozen. Okay, okay I thought you said 2,000. No, 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 no. 24. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
there's a there's a lot of great stuff going on yeah. and uh and you know i couldn't be more excited for for uh for the city but uh, i gotta tell you i have been extremely pleased with the hiring that we've been able to do and the fact that we are you know setting ourselves up for that next generation i mean we've got people that have been with the city you know just an, an, an ungodly yeah. amount of years yeah. you know and and uh, the fact that the city of hillsborough is a place that people want to work for that long you know is impressive i'm hoping that you know with this next generation they might feel the same way so uh but in terms of skills and uh and uh work ethic and everything else i i'm really pleased with uh with yeah. what you've done matt and uh, congratulations thank you yeah, I know you. it's a lot of work. It is, but I think we're I think we're in good shape. And just so everybody knows, I told Matt, you know, we talked about being part of this, and and, and Barney, you were you were part of that uh, interview process too on the uh, city clerk side, so I appreciate that. But uh, but I told Matt, you know, about my involvement. I said, look, we hired you. That's our job. <laughs> I know. So. Uh, so he stepped right up to it, and and I think uh, I think we're going to be in good shape. And and uh, I also would be remiss if I didn't, you know, express my thanks in in, in a council meeting to those that are retiring, uh, to Glenda Stoppel, to uh, Mike Dirksen, to uh, Mana Hine, and 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 Jan Meisinger. You know, it's just you know it's just amazing the, the yeah. work and the effort and the and the imprint that they put on the city and in, in, with their tenure here. And so, uh, you know. And Gary too. And oh, don't, don't thank you, Gary. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> gosh, how can you forget Gary? Gary is a workhorse. I'm telling you, you yeah. know, the, uh, uh, it's, it's good. Avery's going to have his hands full. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's true. Is because, uh, you know, Gary did uh, probably more than a, more than a full-time job. So. Yeah, a year and a half. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. again, you know, we're going to miss every one of them. But uh, I wish them the best and, and thank them from the bottom of my heart for, for their service. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that needs to go? Oh, we need to have council comments. So I apologize. We're on to agenda item H. So I'll just go around. Renee? I don't think I have any today. Okay, Barney? Uh, any I comments? A good person. I thought we hired a good person for city clerk. I think she'll do a fine job. Thank you. David? No, no, I have comments today. All right, Brent? Yeah, I had one question on the mowing um, yeah. that came up. Do the people who weren't awarded the bids, will they be notified? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It was just. Uh, we hadn't got that far yet. Yeah. But I, we're and I didn't think we had, and that's how I answered it, that I thought you'd you'd hear if you didn't, but I didn't right. get asked that question. Yeah, so. we always notify everybody who doesn't receive it. Okay. Um, so they'll have an opportunity. Okay. That's the one I had. Okay. All right. Any other business that needs to come before the council? Hearing none, meeting adjourned. <laughs>